Good afternoon. The next item of business today is a statement from Angela Constance on Every Child, Every Chance, Scotland's first tackling child poverty delivery plan 2018-2022. And the Cabinet Secretary will take questions after a statement, so if you wish to ask a question, please press your request to speak button now. And I call on Angela Constance. Thank you, President. I'm delighted to introduce to the Chamber Every Child, Every Chance, Scotland's tackling child poverty delivery plan for 2018-22. This is an important day for this parliament. This plan is the first of three plans that will take us towards our ambitious 2030 uh, eradicating child poverty targets, which this parliament unanimously agreed in November last year. The consensus that we needed to set statutory targets to reduce and ultimately eradicate child poverty and take action required to meet them was important. It showed that no matter what part of the political spectrum we came from, we recognised deep-seated, long-standing poverty in our country and the causes and consequences of it, and that we wanted that to change. The plan couldn't be more timely. Last week's child poverty statistics show that over the period 2014 to 17, 24 per cent of children were living in relative poverty after housing costs. Too often the real damage behind research like this can get lost in numbers and we cannot forget that behind every statistic there is a child, a family and a community where life chances are being determined not by potential but by circumstance and that is quite simply unacceptable. And our independent projections show that if we do not step up our action now, UK welfare cuts could drive more than one in three children in Scotland into poverty by 2030. This isn't a future that I'm prepared to accept. Yes, the projections are stark, but poverty isn't inevitable. And we as a parliament agreed to take on this challenge when we voted unanimously to pass the Child Poverty Scotland Act 2017. And we are building on strong foundations to continue to support families on low incomes, our commitment to the real living wage, free prescriptions, free school meals, the baby box, and our massive investment in early learning and childcare and affordable housing reflect our determination to tackle poverty. As does the £100 million annual investment to offset the damage of UK welfare cuts, including fully mitigating the bedroom tax. But our challenge going forward is not just to mitigate UK government cuts, but actually to lift people out of poverty. Before discussing the detail of the plan, I would like to take a moment to thank uh, all of those who've contributed to its development. We consulted with people from across Scotland with direct experience of poverty, and perhaps most importantly, we engaged with parents and children themselves. Equality and poverty stakeholder groups and parliamentary committees also offered the wealth of their experience in various areas. And last year we established the Poverty and Inequality Commission so that our actions could be informed by independent expert knowledge. The Commission's advice has been invaluable and we have taken full account of their recommendations. The Commission suggested that the delivery plan should be clear how its proposed actions will support children from high-risk households. So the plan focuses on families at most risk of poverty, who we've called priority families. These are lone parents, families with a disabled child or adult, young mothers, minority ethnic families, families with a child under one, and larger families with three or more children. And our plan also mirrors the advice of the Commission in its structure, focusing firstly on actions to make progress on the three key drivers of child poverty. Firstly, work and earnings, secondly, costs of living, including housing costs, and thirdly, social security. And alongside the interventions aimed at the, the drivers of poverty, the plan also includes action to improve long-term outcomes and quality of life, another recommendation from the Commission. And our aim isn't simply to tackle family poverty now, but to prevent family poverty in the future. And our actions aim to equip children and young people living in poverty now with the, the skills, experiences and resilience so they can avoid poverty in 2030 when they themselves may be parents. So, for example, we're investing £2 million in testing the innovative uh, Children's Neighbourhood Scotland programme in an urban area, a small town and a, a rural community. 
The plan also provides 1.35 million new investment for the further education sector to support and scale up preventative approaches, helping ensure young people who have grown up in poverty have sustainable routes to positive destinations and therefore out of poverty. And we will invest an initial £500,000 in a new tailored community education programme on site for gypsy traveller preschool children and their families. The plan also sets out a range of collaborative cross Scotland partnership actions, recognising that government cannot eradicate child poverty on its own. So we're establishing a new £7.5 million innovation fund together with the Hunter Foundation. This joint investment will support new approaches to preventing and reducing child poverty. And we are providing £500,000 for the Healthier Wealthier Children Income Maximisation Approach. And this will help secure financial and practical support uh, through healthcare settings across Scotland for pregnant women and families with children at risk of or experiencing poverty. Our interventions also tackle the key drivers of child poverty, starting with parents' work and earnings. Sustainable fair work is a long-term route out of poverty, so I'm pleased to say that we will invest £12 million in a new support for parents' employment, which will be developed alongside our national devolved employment service, Fair Start Scotland. This will support at least 38,000 people over three years and have positive impacts on around 7,000 children. Our actions in this section of the plan also include our intention to build a living wage nation, lifting at least 25,000 more people onto the living wage in the next three years. And a new package of support for equality at work comprises new action on the gender pay gap, a new approach to employment uh, developed with disabled people, uh, new support for flexible working and increased funding uh, for the Workplace Equality Fund. And we'll also take a range of action to help families with the everyday costs of living right now. We will work to introduce a new minimum amount for the school clothing grant, providing more money for school uniforms and sport kits. We will invest a million pounds in delivering support for children experiencing food insecurity during school holidays. And we will provide new support for childcare after school and in the holidays too. There will be a, a new focus on families and our Warmer Home Scotland programme, delivering an annual average saving of £350 off fuel bills. And we will invest £3 million in a financial health check guarantee, helping low-income families maximise their income and to get the best deals. And we will provide £1 million for the Carnegie UK's Trust Affordable Credit Loan Fund, increasing access to credit and reducing problems caused by insecure incomes. Finally, President Officer, I want to turn to Social Security and the new powers which gives us new opportunities. Our new Best Start grant will provide children in low-income families with payments at key stages during their early years, a grant that will not put a cap on children. For a family of two children, this is an increase of up to £1,400 more than they would get under the UK government's current Sure Start maternity grant. And we will provide more support to carers, establishing a new Young Carers Grant from 2019, and from this year, increasing the level of carers' allowance, a 13% rise for our carers. Over and above our existing Social Security programme, President Officer, I can confirm today that we do intend to introduce a new income supplement providing financial support to those families who need it most. In planning to introduce a supplement over the lifetime of this plan, we will take the analysis provided by the Commission to the next stage. We will now consider the detail of such a supplement, the level at which it should be set, and those at whom it should be targeted, in order to help lift the maximum number of children out of poverty. We will also identify a robust and viable delivery route to get the additional income to families. We will need to ensure that delivery costs are reasonable, complexity is minimised, and that the impact on earnings and interactions with UK benefits are fully explored and understood. We will do this bearing in mind that our priority is the safe and secure transfer of the benefits to be delivered to this Parliament. We will not let down the 1.4 million people of Scotland relying on those benefits to be delivered to them by the end of this parliamentary term. 
and we will, presiding officer, provide an update in the first progress report uh, due next year. Presiding officer, this plan builds on the determination we showed by bringing the Child Poverty Act to Parliament and gaining unanimous support. But it's what happens next that's important now, as we work to deliver on the commitments that I've set out today. It means a country where every child has every chance in life and meeting the child poverty tar targets means transforming Scotland. So in 2018, the Year of Young People, I commend this plan to Parliament. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cabinet Secretary. We'll now move to questions. Jeremy Balfour. Thank you, President Officer. And can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her statement and for advanced sight of it. Uh, there are some things within this uh, statement that I'm sure everyone within this chamber will welcome, but I have a, a couple of questions just to explore a bit further. There was uh, one mention, very brief mention, within her statement in regard to affordable housing. Uh, would the Cabinet Secretary uh, confirm that at this present rate, the government is going to miss its target in regard to affordable housing, and that this is one of the key areas in regard to helping people out of poverty. Secondly, she will be aware that Audit Scotland reported this week that the SNP government has not attempted to work out how much uh, it's going to cost to bring the devolved social security system to Scotland. If ministers are caught out by these costs, the excess cash will have to come from her budget and thus affect priority families that like she's been talking about. Can the Cabinet Secretary respond to the report and reveal what steps are to be made to ensure greater transparency and a better understanding of the overall implementation costs to help financial planning and decision making going forward? Cabinet Secretary. Thank you very much, uh, President Officer. And I'm grateful to Mr Balfour uh, for his questions on affordable housing uh, and transparency uh, around the work that we're pursuing around social security uh, costs. And I'll come on to the point uh, with respect to the, the, the Audit Scotland report. And he you know, seems to have his uh, criticism uh, of the, U, the Scottish Government. But I wonder if this implied criticism of the Scottish Government means that Mr Balfour is absolutely raging at his UK Tory government. Because given that 60% of Scotland's spending decisions are still made in London, given that child poverty is actually rising across the UK, it's lower in Scotland, and given that the Joseph Rowntree Foundation says that the benefits freeze is the biggest driver of rising poverty in and out of work, and given that by 2020 welfare spend in this country it will be down by £4 million, I wonder, I wonder why he has nothing to say about Theresa May and her lack of inaction about the Berlin uh, injustices in this country. And I expect very much and welcome to be held to account for our responsibilities and our decisions and absolutely <coughs> welcome that. But what's good, goose, good for the goose has to be good uh, for the gander. And that was something that the Audit Scotland report touched upon because the Audit Scotland report rightly highlighted that we have two social security systems in this country and how they interact uh, is dependent on each other. And much of our progress will indeed be dependent on the DWP's cooperation with this government. And I've had at least one occasion to write to the Secretary of State to query that commitment to work uh, with this government. And I hope that I don't have to do that again. Now, I very much welcome uh, the Audit Scotland's uh, recognition that you will see, if you actually read the Audit Scotland report, that good early progress has been made on social security and that we're well prepared in the remaining uh, work that we have to do. And we know that this is a critical year for our new social security system. And Audit Scotland confirmed that we were indeed uh, on time with wave one benefits, that we were indeed uh, had good uh, risk uh, management uh, procedures uh, in place. And of course, uh, the minister uh, last week uh, was making the announcement with regard to uh, our social security agency, again on track, Mr Balfour, and that the first phase of recruitment uh, has commenced. And we, I believe, have bent over backwards to be transparent and to be proactive uh, about the costs and about the emerging costs 
And of course, we have a very detailed financial memorandum attached to the Minister's uh, Social Security Bill. But if we, if members wish us to provide even more information, we are absolutely uh, open to that. But the Minister and I have bent over backwards to proactively keep this Parliament uh, and, and the Committee in particular informed. And I really reject, Mr Balfour, that you're suggesting that this Parliament and this Government won't meet our affordable housing targets. Because the latest reports, including a report from Shelter Scotland and others, said that we are on track to meet our target of 50,000 affordable homes. And it is my view, and it's just my view, that one of the reasons that in Scotland we have lower child poverty rates than elsewhere in the UK is because of our substantial investment over the past 10 years in affordable housing. But we know there's more to do, absolutely more to do, and we are up for that challenge. I, I appreciate that, that there is some political interchange, particularly in the opening remarks. Uh, perhaps we could move to questions and answers from now on. Elaine Smith. Thank you, President Officer. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for the early sight of this statement, and I do agree that poverty is not inevitable. However, whilst the Tories' callous benefit cuts are, of course, plunging more children and working families into poverty, the Scottish Government can escape the responsibility after a decade in office. But unfortunately, much of the statement seems to promise jam tomorrow. So can the Cabinet Secretary give more detail of how the Scottish Government's social security powers will be used to top up uh, family benefits and boost incomes? I also note the mention of the Scottish Government's universal benefits. Therefore, with 230,000 children living in poverty right now and one in three Scottish children set to be plunged below the breadline over the next decade, will she now stop joining with the Tories to block Labour amendments on the £5 child benefit top-up and support this effective, simple-to-administer policy, which we know provides no disincentive to working families? Perhaps you could tell us why she's been ignoring organisations like Child Poverty Action Group who say it would be the most effective way for tackling child poverty right now to help give every child every chance. And I also note the investment of one million for school holiday hunger. Well, given that North Lanarkshire Council alone are investing half a million for this purpose, how can she be confident that this will cover the costs uh, across Scotland? And finally, a decade on from the SNP manifesto promise of expanding universal free school meals, will she now stop the stigma, feed all of our primary age children, and by doing so help alleviate in work poverty? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, thank you, President Officer, and I'll do my best to uh, answer questions as efficiently as possible. I think it's fair to say, though, when it comes to what we need to do to uh, tackle child poverty, to end child poverty in Scotland, it's a complex matter. There are no silver bullets, and there are certainly uh, no 60-second soundbites. I would like to point, uh, Ms Smith, to the independent and expert advice that we got from the Poverty and Inequality Commission that we all agreed to establish. And we have an opportunity here to unite around that independent and expert advice. And we also have an opportunity, of course, to uh, unite around uh, against the Tories at the UK government and the devastation that they're caused, as well as uniting around a call uh, for more powers. Because if the Tories uh, won't fix their broken system, surely we should be having control over it in this place uh, to pursue uh, some of the opportunities that we all so dearly wish. Now, I know that uh, Ms Smith is uh, actually a powerful advocate for uh, topping up child benefit. I absolutely understand the arguments for it. There is a, a benefit uh, to the social wage, uh, to a, a universality. But given the scale of the challenge, we have just published figures that if we do not do things differently, we risk 38% of children in Scotland grown up in relative poverty. The scale of the challenge is getting worse. Therefore, we need to look very closely at the independent expert advice, which points to better ways to lift more children out of poverty. And make no mistake about it, the development of a new income supplement is a substantial undertaking that demonstrates our commitment uh, to reach our ambitious targets to reduce uh, and ultimately end uh, child poverty. There is a range of detailed work that we now need to do. We'll commence that work next year. The Commission helpfully pointed that to a package of reforms that if you topped up child benefit, you would lift 20,000 children out of poverty 
for a cost of £360 million. It pointed to another package of measures that was indeed more targeted where you would lift 45,000 children out of poverty. And we intend to keep Parliament informed every step of the way in the development of a new income supplement. Because I want to take Parliament with us in this, because this is a substantial undertaking that will involve a substantial investment. And we want to debate the detail of that. We want to debate how we get the best eh, and most robust and reliable eh, delivery eh, route as well. And finally, eh, Poseidon Officer, in terms of the eh, Fair Food Fund, we have expanded eh, the Fair Food Fund eh, across the piece. Very important point, you know, children going hungry in Scotland today. I find that, I find that an obscenity. I am answering, I am answering these questions eh, to, the, to, to the best endeavour eh, for the members who are asking very detailed eh, questions. We have expanded our Fair Food Fund generally and on top of that there is additional funding uh, to target uh, holiday hunger in children and out of school care uh, hunger for children. We will take that forward uh, in partnership with local governments uh, obviously but also in partnership uh, with, local authority, with uh, the, the local uh, third sector organisations that I know are doing so much great work on the ground. Thank you. Okay, so half our time has gone in the first two questions, which were multi-clausal questions with multi-clausal answers. So I just say to all members, 10 more members wish to ask a question, don't give me any preamble. Just ask a question and we'll get an answer. Okay? Ask a question, no preamble, straight to answer. Michelle Ballantyne. Thank you, presiding officer. Does the Minister agree that if she is serious about combating deep-seated, long-standing poverty in our country by addressing its causes and consequences, Scotland needs to create an environment that encourages business growth and job creation, and we need to ensure that our children have equality of opportunity, whatever their background, by listening to head teachers' concerns around staff shortages when it comes to closing the attainment gap? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, President officer, I uh, would uh, say that the fundamentals of the Scottish uh, economy is strong. Uh, it was part of the Commission's advice uh, about our endeavours to tackle uh, child poverty. It needs to have a very strong focus uh, on the economy, uh, as well as uh, increasing uh, wages uh, and, and earnings. Uh, we know that productivity growth in Scotland is good. We know that employment uh, is on the up. Uh, we know we need to have an absolute focus uh, on inclusive growth, which is about delivering growth uh, and also uh, tackling inequalities. But of course, the biggest uh, risk to economic growth just now is not from this government, uh, it's actually from the UK Tory government uh, and their plans to, to drag us out of Brexit. I really hope the member gets out and about over uh, recess uh, and the, the weeks and months to come uh, to speak uh, to, to head teachers. I know I uh, certainly uh, continue to do that. And I know that our massive investment of £750 million over the lifetime of this parliament uh, in the, the form of the Attainment uh, Challenge Fund is very welcome indeed and is allowing head teachers to make flexible decisions and decisions based on the needs of their school. Claire Adamson, followed by Mark Griffin. Claire Adamson. Officer, as convener of the Social Security Committee, I'm well aware of the work that both the government and the committee needs to do to ensure that all legislation and regulations are in place to ensure the benefits can be delivered to the 1.4 million people who rely on them. Given the priority that the Cabinet Secretary and the Minister have already shown to these plans, can she explain how the um, income supplement will fit in to the delivery of Social Security in Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. Poseidon officer, the, the focus of this government is indeed the safe and secure transfer of the living benefits that will transfer to this, the Scottish Parliament. And we are establishing the new uh, Social Security Agency to ensure the delivery of the benefits over uh, this parliamentary term. And we know uh, that we're making good progress and that will ensure people continue uh, to receive their benefit at the right time, at the right amount. And that is uh, our uh, top priority. We do also want to get the income supplement right. The details around that are very important. We want to ensure that we effectively and efficiently uh, reach the most people. Uh, we want to consider our options very carefully, as I've indicated uh, in earlier at uh, answers to ensure that the investment we make has a maximum impact uh, in child poverty and we will be starting working on options uh, for the income supplement this year and we'll provide an update in the 2019 progress report. Thank you. Mark Griffin to be followed by Christina McKelvey. Thank you, President Officer. The rollout of universal credit has been symbolic and roundly criticised by many members 
in this chamber. Can the Cabinet Secretary give an assurance to those priority families that the proposed new income supplement will not rely on or make use of that discredited system? Cabinet so, Secretary. Mr Griffin makes a really important point because the evidence uh, on the modelling from the Poverty and Inequality Commission um, showed an alternative way other than topping up child benefit to reach more children. And what we have to do is to find the right delivery route to do that. And we need to explore the universal credit options, we will do, but we are absolutely cognizant of how problematic universal credit is as a reserve benefit and that we at any moment uh, could have the rug pulled from under our feet. The rollout has been shambolic, it's pushed people into poverty. Uh, the benefit itself has become um, discredited, although you know, much needed uh, for many uh, vulnerable uh, families. And the final point, presiding officer, is this isn't all in our gift. The DWP would need to agree to schedule any income supplement into their work schedule. And they would also charge us uh, to do so on our behalf. Christina McKelvey to be followed by Alison Johnson. Thank you very much, President Officer. The Cabinet Secretary will know that the Equality and Human Rights Committee has focused a lot of its work on gypsy traveller children. So it was very welcome to see half a million pounds as an initial investment um, on community education, tailored community ed education uh, on site for gypsy traveller preschool children. Can the Cabinet Secretary tell me how this will address the needs of gypsy traveller children in Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. Side officer, we will indeed invest an initial £500,000 to work directly uh, with Gypsy Traveller families and other partners uh, as part of a, a tailored community education programme that will be offered uh, on site for families. And it will be composed of three elements specially tailored play and early learning opportunities for preschool children, uh, on site adult learning opportunities for parents and carers, uh, work with older siblings who are of secondary school age uh, but not attending school. And we want these components uh, to support children in the early learning to help parents uh, with their own literacy and numeracy and offer young people access uh, to a range of different training and uh, learning opportunities. It remains the case that Gypsy Traveller families uh, are one of the most marginalised groups in our society uh, and this government, with the support of this parliament, is absolutely uh, determined uh, to change that and the member will be well aware of the work that I'm leading with respect to the ministerial working group uh, and how we intend to engage with the community too. Alison Johnson to be followed by Willie Rennie. You, based on the positive financial health and other impacts of the Healthier Wealthier Children Scheme in Greater Glasgow and Clyde, what gains does the Cabinet Secretary envisage for families and what outcome does she seek from the national rollout with £500,000 worth of funding of this successful scheme, a rollout long called for and welcomed by the Scottish Greens? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, so I know that Ms Johnson has been a very uh, powerful advocate and champion uh, of the Healthier Wealthier uh, scheme that has operated uh, in, in the west of Scotland. In terms of outcomes uh, for families, it will ensure families get better earlier advice uh, and it will indeed help to uh, ensure that many families at the end of the day uh, get their entitlements to benefit or fuel poverty advice and that will save them money or put more money into their pocket. I know that the Cabinet Secretary for Health has uh, very recently replied uh, to Ms Johnson that she's happy to meet with her uh, to provide uh, more information, but we've made good progress, and I think in particular the work around the uh, universal health, health visiting pathways is particularly exciting, given that uh, there's so much additional investment in health visitors that it will become the norm to be advising families uh, what they are entitled to and signposting them uh, to other services and that I think could be embedded uh, in other children's services. Willie Rennie to be followed by Bob Doris. Uh, the Joseph Rowntree Foundation have drawn the connection between uh, poor mental health and child poverty and I've looked through the plan today but can't see any new investment in child mental health so can the minister reassure me that there is new money coming into mental health today for children? 
Cabinet Secretary. Mr Rennie raises a, a very important point. There's a significant section of the plan that does indeed uh, address, address uh, mental health. Uh, there is indeed a, a correlation between health inequalities uh, and poverty. He'll be well aware of the work undertaken uh, by Ms Watt. The purpose of this plan is to demonstrate how we get more money into the pockets of families, how we reduce their living costs, and by improving people's income insecurity, we hope to support the work led by Ms Watt in terms of improving people's pockets uh, and also by association uh, their mental health. And it is important in terms of the work, the new employment service that we're doing, the work that we're doing around homelessness as well, that all of that is not looking at people as uh, two-dimensional objects that we accept and want to work with people on the basis of their needs. And that may be uh, their mental health, it may be uh, their employment issues, it may be you know, ensuring that they get income uh, maximisation. But I would hope that once Mr uh, Rennie connects the work that's currently going on in mental health with the work that's going on um, to reduce child poverty, that he will see that that will take us another step forward. Bob Doris to be followed by Maurice Golden. Uh, President Officer, the Scottish Government ambition to tackle non-term time hunger aligns well with the new Glasgow City Government's extension of free school meals to primary, two, to primary four and, to the, and their new holiday hunger fund. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree partnership working with councils and the third sector is vital to such success and will she meet with myself and council colleagues to discuss and explore this partnership working further? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, officer, I'm always delighted to uh, meet with members uh, from any political party in this chamber and indeed uh, anybody who's working at uh, a local level uh, to tackle uh, child poverty. As I said earlier, there is additional support uh, in our Fair Food Fund uh, and we want to, in particular, I think, join up some of the work um, in terms of improving out-of-school care, uh, increasing the, the educational and the extracurricular opportunities that children have, uh, and also the many projects that are uh, operating the length and breadth of Scotland um, to feed uh, our children. And there is additional money uh, to address uh, food poverty, uh, and I would hope that that would be welcomed. Morris Golden to be followed by Rona Mackay. Can the Cabinet Secretary describe how the Scottish Government intend to support low-income families struggling to cope with the rising cost of rent? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, again, I thank Mr Golden uh, for, for that question. Uh, he will be well aware of our substantial investment uh, in uh, affordable housing. Uh, the social rented uh, sector work very hard uh, to keep rents uh, affordable. Um, there is some evidence that, that there, are, there is some uh, rent inflation uh, in the social sector uh, and we want to uh, work uh, with housing providers, particularly as they build more houses, uh, to find better ways to make uh, more savings. You'll see that detailed uh, in the plan uh, so that therefore we can prevent uh, rent inflation in the social sector. In terms of the private rented sector, uh, we of course have uh, legislation that was the biggest shake-up in the private rented sector uh, for over uh, 30 years. Uh, but of course, uh, in terms of rents, we continue to fully mitigate uh, the bedroom tax, uh, which uh, you know, it ensures that people can remain in their own homes, afford to pay their rent, and are not put at additional risk of homelessness. And Runa Mackay. Uh, because of the Tories' onslaught and people already struggling to make ends meet, we've seen a rise in child poverty um, in households where someone works. What will this plan do to support parents in this position? Cabinet Secretary. So, you know, so, I mean, the member is right. Uh, seven in ten Scottish children in poverty uh, live in a household where someone is actually in work, whereas about one in ten uh, children in poverty live in a household where all the adults are unemployed. So uh, to focus, as others uh, might do, uh, on other uh, so-called uh, causes, we need to have some uh, caution about terms such as worklessness, uh, for example, because the main drivers of poverty, as set out in the plan, are inadequate income from work, which is what the plan uh, seeks to address with the powers we have. Uh, the other driver of poverty is the high costs for uh, essential goods uh, and, of course, uh, the continued uh, UK government uh, welfare cuts. And I'm pleased to say that uh, the delivery plan uh, highlights a new £12 million programme uh, for intensive uh, key worker support, helping parents who have been out of the labour market to get back into work, but also, crucially, supporting those parents 
in low-paid jobs to stay in work and to progress their careers. Thank you very much. And that concludes our statement. Apologies to members we couldn't reach. But we need to move on to the next debate, which we're already eating into. Just take a few moments for members and the ministers to change seats.